I was never gonna be a man's physique. Didn't have much of an off season. I like his physique better. I'm always very energetic. I will have to put me as one of the greatest. Mr. Olympia was won by the back. How dangerous are diuretics in your opinion? Because I keep hearing it's like one of the most dangerous substances you can possibly take. Super dangerous, man. I, ha I have some, I have stories galore about diuretics. What's the worst experience you've had? Probably the worst experience that I had was when, I, after I finished Teenage Nationals, I took two years off so that I can start competing in the NPC in the open division. I was 22 at the time. And, um, and I remember I was, I dieted super hard for the show, man. Like it was my first, uh, it was my first men's open show and it was at Southern States. I really wanted to do a good job. I was doing the diet like perfectly. I was peeled out of my mind. And at the time, my coach, what he had me do is we were trying to push the weight from Walter weight to go to lightweight. I was much lighter at that time, Walter weight to lightweight. And we were down a couple pounds. So at that time I didn't, there was no internet. There was like, there was internet, but there was no information about what you could find on the internet and, and, you know, the forums and all this stuff. So you kind of had to just go by what your trainer is telling you to do. And I was super like devoted to, you know, whatever he said was like the Bible, you know, I was, I was like that wouldn't question it. I do it. So his methods were very old school and four weeks out of the show, we had already pulled salt. <laughs> So we had pulled salt already. I was boiling everything. Again, I wasn't holding an ounce of fat. I was super shredded. We were trying to make weight and I took a, a, a Lasix. So so I that, took that's a, Lasix. a diuretic? Yeah, that's like the worst one that you can take. It's non-potassium sparing. Um, this like just literally sucks you out like a prune. You know, most guys back in the day in the old, old school bodybuilding, that's what they would take. You know, most people now they're, they would take something like Diazide that uh is potassium sparing but i you know i didn't know i didn't know anything at that time there was again there was no internet there was no youtube for people to talk about these things i took the lasix we waited we waited i went into the weigh-ins and i was still one pound under and he goes look we're not going to continue to push it so i had already put put this lasix in now the lasix is going is not potassium sparing and it's going to just completely flush you of water and with water comes sodium so Remember, I was already boiling all my food. I wasn't taking in any additional sodium. And on top of that, I took a Lasix and therefore it was going to push the rest of my water out followed with salt. But you could see how this recipe is going to, you know, be really terrible. He looked at me the night before the show. I was super peeled. He goes, now let's do a load. For those that don't know what a load is, you pretty much you don't drink water and you just eat pizza, burgers everything to fill out very specific times that you can do that the conditioning that i had i could get away with doing a load at that time i was shredded out of my mind i did that but again now we're putting sodium back into the body but no water no, no water. water no liquid no water so now you got a situation where my salt levels in my body are super high water is super low and I wasn't taking in any any water to begin with, so I'm super dehydrated at this point. I'm not, at the morning show, we go up, we go up to prejudging. They line us up, and immediately when I stand there, they had me in the middle. They didn't move me, but it felt like an eternity up there with the lights and everything. And I started seeing, you know, things getting really cloudy up there. And in my head, I'm like, Yo, if this if this continues, I'm gonna pass out on stage. I need water. I'm, 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 I'm feeling dizzy, absolutely terrible. Finally, we finished prejudging. We went backstage and then now my body is overheating. It can't get cold. Remember dehydrated, no sweat. My body cannot cool itself down. We had to run over to the, to the, um, uh, to the hotel where we were staying at and I had to dip my feet into ice buckets because my body could not cool itself down. Now, looking back at that story, I should have 100% gone to the hospital at that point. Should have 100% gone to the hospital. I know that I was having, having heart palpitations from that. And, you know, again, I got very lucky in that situation. And these are the types of stories that I feel like I have to tell these stories so that somebody doesn't do it themselves. I mean, that's so stupid. Such a stupid thing to do, taking the Lasix, not drinking water, not putting salt in your foods. All of these things need to be put out there so that, you know, somebody else doesn't do the same.
than I do and end up in the hospital and possibly not. So your coach was basically giving you the wrong advice. Very, very old school advice. A lot of the, a lot of the, a lot of the things that he taught me were very, again, just that's the only word I can put it. Very old school methods of doing things, boiling food, you know, not salting food. We know that you have to salt food. I mean, to maintain a pump for your muscles to look healthy, uh, to maintain hydration, all of that's super important. Now I, you know, even when I was prepping, I would salt my foods regular, but in the back of my mind, I'm like, man, I've come a long way from that. Just very old school methods, no YouTube, no forums to cross reference the things that he was telling me. You know, a lot of people do that. The coach tells them something and they have another source. They'll ask somebody else. And, um, and yeah, I mean, would I say it's the wrong advice? Yes. But will I say that I'm kind of happy that I learned, you know, through practical methods? Yeah, because I never did that to any of my clients, that's for sure. You know, it's interesting, like, uh, you know, there's been a lot of different deaths in within the fitness bodybuilding community, right, over, over the course of last year. And they're for different reasons. So, you know, I don't want to attribute every, I don't want to be disrespectful and just say it's just for from this, just from that. But, you know, um, and that's just what we see being reported, right? Yeah. What, what you're talking about right now is I'm sure like a lot of people had similar experiences, but we just don't know the capacity to, because, you know, if somebody does get hurt but doesn't die, like, we, we might never know if they don't put the information out. You know what I'm saying? I think I think that people maybe at some point say they, they get they're ashamed, you know, like let's say this scenario happened to somebody. They're probably you know, they're probably ashamed to talk about it, you know, ashamed that people are going to be like, oh, you're you know, you you're an idiot. You should never do that, blah, blah, blah. So they just hold it in and they never they never talk about it. You know, uh, like I said, I think it's very important to talk about all these experiences because I guarantee that I'm not the only one that pulled something off like this. And I won't be the, and I probably won't be the last one either. But if somebody can hear it and say, "Yo, this is not the right way of doing it," then I did my job. But you know, in bodybuilding, it's like it seems like it's it's mani it's manipulating so many different things. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like a one way. You know what I mean? Like coaches, like last minute, they they try to like do different things depending on what's happening. You know, and I feel like it's almost like trial and error. And it's like almost like you have to peak and to get to the peak, you have to, you have to sometimes take different, you know what I mean? Like oh, 100%. You know? Every, every prep of mine over the last 10 years have been vastly different between the diet, between the training, between the drugs, everything has always changed. And not because I don't want to just do it the same way every time is that your body's not the same every single time that you prep for a show. You know, there's a lot of different factors that get involved. You know, what was your what was your diet prior to starting the prep? How was your training before starting the prep? All of these are factors. What's your stress levels like? All these are factors. So um, there's a lot of different factors involved. Not one prep is the same. But yes, um, you know, I think it's really important that that once you find a coach that you're comfortable with, don't move from coach to coach. I've had a couple coaches in my in my career as well. Mostly, I've always been with my my buddy Andrew Vu. We've been together for a very long time. He knows what to expect already, and I think that a lot of these guys that are trying to find that secret formula, who is the magic coach? You know, one one year it's this guy, another year it's this guy. It's like a it's like a trend. Stick to one guy. Give him an opportunity to learn you, to learn your body, and I think that 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 right there would would help each competitor out if you just give these uh, coaches a little bit more time to uh, figure you out because there ain't no coach at least in my career that has figured me out the first time or the second time or the third time it takes multiple tries.